Hello everyone. Alright, <clears throat> omens working in real life. So this is going to be the video, uh, the final video on this series. I'm going to talk about Jupiter and Venus omens. So Jupiter and Venus uh, sometimes are grouped together in some of the old books, you know, because they both kind of sometimes create similar effects and they bring good. And in a similar way I've noticed that um, well, uh, their omens can sort of be similar. They can overlap a little bit. You know, both Venus and Jupiter are gurus, so omens dealing with your gurus, you know, can, can be related to Venus or Jupiter. Um, they both rule biped form. You know, they're not uh, the bird form or the creeping form or the quadruped form. They rule the biped, like human upright forms, like even like great apes. And in my opinion, the waterfowl, the water birds, such as herons and egrets, um, are birds, but they're actually biped because they spend most of their time just standing, you know, the majority of their time is not in flight. And um, they're not just running around like birds constantly. And I think that more has that mercury connotation. Sun and mercury are related to birds, if you weren't aware of that. Um, but yeah, Jupiter and Venus are bipeds. So when it comes to humans, uh, Jupiter and Venus can both play the role of like a wise human just stepping in and saying something for you that you need to listen to. So sometimes an older, elder figure will just tell you what's up in life and just take you aside and set you straight and tell you, look, you're not doing that right. You need to do it like this. And that can be just a simple Jupiter or Venus omen, you know, and you need to listen to it probably. Um... The, in terms of the animals, though, uh, okay, obviously Ju Jupiter is a man on a horseback, so horses are related to Jupiter. Some schools of Jyotish say that, the, that Saturn is the planet of horse, and I can see that as well, because Saturn does rule quadruped, um, but I think of Saturn as more ruling like the beasts of burden, so in the sense of like a horse as a carrying burdens and as like carrying a a carriage or something. I can see Saturn and Jupiter. So there could be some, I think there's some overlap there and it kind of depends on the situation. So horses could relate to Saturn in some cases, but I would also relate them to Jupiter. I think a wild free horse is just Jupiter. You know what I mean? Like uh, horses in the occult world, um, they really symbolize power, like if you, that's what the Native Americans say, um, and we even still describe things with horsepower, you know, uh, stealing horses is stealing power, that's a Native American saying, um, and so, yeah, so I think that, that power, you know, of Jupiter and Indra and, you know, the bow and, and that one-pointedness is mainly Jupiter, but it can also relate to Saturn. So if you see horses when you're contemplating something, you know, you're driving down the road and you you know, there are some parts of South Carolina that are country and rural enough to where there are still people with horses, and you might see one driving down the road. And I have had that in, you know, when I've been contemplating something and thought, seen that, and going, okay, I know it's going to work out powerfully. And then it did. Um, the peace dove would be another common Jupiter or Venus omen. You know, just the turtle doves, the peace dove, um, a universal symbol of uh, benevolence. Um, and like I was saying a moment ago, egrets, herons, uh, cranes, and water birds. Now the white ones, the pure white ones, I would relate more to Venus, you know? Venus is white, Shukra, that's, that's one of her names. Um, and then the heron, which is blue and, and mottled and sort of like dirtier and, um, earth looking is, uh, is more Jupiter, in my opinion. Hmm. So this morning, I saw the, as I was doing my emails, and I had this one person, I was like, oh, I have a good feeling about this reading, you know, as I was writing them back, and I looked over, and I saw the great blue heron was flying in, and was like landing on this bush, you know, this tall, kind of like bushy tree at the edge of my backyard, and I had a really good feeling that, yeah, that confirms that this is going to be a good reading that we're going to do, and this happens to me constantly. Um, the nature, there's a great blue heron in most lakes, like if you live in the United States, uh, most natural big lakes will have one heron. And so following and observing, as you can see, I, as you know, if you watch my channel, I have a lake in my backyard and I have marsh, I'm surrounded by water. My fourth house, Lord, is in Pisces and I have a lot of water stuff in my chart. <clears throat> and the, 
the heron is like this wonderful, just natural, you know, reading tool for me. Like when I wake up and I have to do readings almost every day. So when I wake up, I go outside and I, you know, stretch or I, you know, check out the environment and meditate a bit. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, if I see the heron perched up in an auspicious place, I just know that I'm going to do a great reading that day. And I do. It happens. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. And what's cool about like these birds is that you don't have maybe a great blue heron where you live, but you probably have a very similar waterfowl and it's probably even more beautiful. You know, like I know some of the cranes and, and herons in, in Asia and in India are, are really amazing and beautiful birds. So if you see that that's an, that's like a, that's grace, you know, that's God's grace gracing you at that moment. The peacock is more Venus, but this is the same idea, you know, the sacred peacock. Um, you know, some people even speculate that the phoenix was actually related to the peacock, may have been the peacock. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, great blue herons are definitely Jupiter because they symbolize meditation and contemplation. That's what the Native Americans say that they are the omen of. I've also had Native Americans say that they are also like the hawk in that they symbolize messages. But I think it's the same idea of contemplating one point in this and then chah, there's the fish. You know what I mean? Just, like, just getting it. It means like getting the point, getting the singular point you needed to get out of this and then moving on. You know what I mean? And so it could also relate to like, you know, like Vishaka Nakshatra, the Nakshatra being one pointed. Um, um, Oh, and then we have the turkey. In North America, we have the turkey, which is just a classic Jupiter omen. So if you're thinking on some Jupiter-related things and you see a turkey, that's probably a good thing that you should do. Here's one example. I can give two examples. One time I was contemplating giving away something very big. You know what I mean? And I saw turkeys as I was driving right then and there, and it was on a main, the main Folly Road, which is a huge road. So it was kind of odd to see turkeys at that time. And that was obviously a symbol because the Native Americans will tell you that the turkey symbolizes a giveaway. It symbolizes giving and fairness and just giving, giving what you can. Um, of course, Thanksgiving, we ate the turkey with the Native Americans. Well, there's a deeper meaning behind that. And that's because the turkey is this animal that got too fat to fly, basically. Like it symbolizes you know, abundant, like an abundance that you're just going to give away, <laughs> you know, that just, that animals are meant to get to. Um, now, this brings me to an interesting point about the Jupiter animal, I think a little more than the Venus animal. In all your ancient cultures, you had the main animal, if they were not a vegetarian culture, if they were a meat-eating culture, the main animal which sustained them and fed them was deified and it was thanked and it was just praised for the abundance because that animal literally became the flesh of their tribe and everyone. So Native Americans had the buffalo. So the buffalo would be a Jupiter omen, even though it's a quadruped, if you ask me, because the buffalo deep down symbolizes like God God giving you your sustenance and keeping you alive. You know what I mean? And without this, you cannot live. You know what I mean? And that that's like a deeper, I think, omen of these Jupiter animals. So now you can understand also a reason why Pisces, the sign of Jupiter, is the fishes. Because the fish was this animal of ancient times, which, you know, gently gave itself to you. Like it, it you know... Um, fighting a deer, a lion, or these things could kill you. You know what I mean? To eat meat, to eat a bull or a cow even could trample you and kill you. But fishes, you know, this was just this harmless act of, in all the types of meat eating, fish is always the most spiritual, the most religious act. You know, Jesus, I'll make you fishers of men. You know, he went to the dock, he went and looked for fishermen um, who were poor and relied on nothing but the fish that God was giving them to survive. There's this sort of, there's this quality that, that fish has um, that relates to that. Fish don't have a nervous system, so it really is more humane and ethical to eat fish if you're going to eat any meat because you're not, when you eat an animal, people don't understand this, that yogis don't necessarily say not to eat meat for health reasons. They're saying because of the impressions of the animal. When you eat 
an, uh, when you slaughter a cow, it releases all its fear and adrenaline because it knows it's being slaughtered right then. And, it, and that creates, that impregnates the entire meat with toxins. Just like how when you have your adrenaline going, you're kind of paralyzed and you can't move even and you breathe differently. That's literally because the toxins are in your system now. And when you eat a cow that's been slaughtered that way and not had kosher prayers or halal prayers done or anything, you're, you're eating its fear. You're literally eating its fear and animalistic qualities and those qualities are going deep down into your tissues and those are, you know, impregnating your mind. And as one quote from the Upanishad says, the subtle energy of your food becomes your mind. So that's the real reason you don't eat meat, not because it's like mean to the cow. Actually, the cow benefits spiritually from being able to give its flesh to you. So the cow moves up in the astral planes, you move down by eating it though. So that's just, I, I don't care what you guys eat, that's just, a, you need to know this to fully understand what this means. And so, so ancient cultures would have like the buffalo or the deer, you know what I mean? Or this, or this animal that provided everything. It provided not just their food, but their clothing, their, you know, their, their, their everything. You know, they used every part of it, the hide, all of it. Um, the ancient Philistine culture worshipped a Jupiter-related deity, and um, that that was a culture that worshipped fish and deified fish, and it was a fishing culture, and they lived off of fish. So fish can be a symbol of Jupiter, and it can be a symbol of this free giving, like just giving, you know what I mean? Or just not nitpicking, not being myopic, and just being open like a fish is, to give itself, to be eaten to whatever the other person needs. And again, it's kind of neat because Venus is exalted in that sign. And it's a very altruistic sort of thing I'm talking about here. Oh, another time, back to the turkey, another time uh, I was visiting my yoga teacher in the mountains and I stumbled upon, and I drove right past two turkeys and, and me and him and he taught me some deeper meditation stuff that time. I had a really great time. Like that's another example of the turkey um, as an omen of Jupiter, something good happening related to your guru maybe. But um, I think a more universal way to understand it would be this whole idea of like the turkey as what sustains the culture and the tribe and the society and it freely gives that and so that is deified as like the compassionate aspect of God that is sustaining us because without that we wouldn't be alive. So I think that it can depend on the time and place that you're living in in this circumstance. Uh, so certain different things could be an omen, you know, like to the Inuits in As in Alaska, they, it might be the whale that is this Jupiter, you know what I mean? Who, the ones who hunt um, and live off mainly uh, whale and, and seafood and that fat. Um, salmon, I think some other tribes, the salmon was the same idea, and that again is a fish. So we can see that coming through. Um, a few other things that I would relate it to is uh, hummingbirds. You know, hummingbirds are just symbolized joy to Native Americans and they say like never use profanity around a hummingbird or anything like that. So they can symbolize this childlike joy that Jupiter represents. Um, oh, and of course elephants. I don't have elephants where I live, right? You know, <laughs> there's no elephants in America. But uh, you know, gajas, elephants, you know, that's, that's definitely going to be a Jupiter related omen. Um, if you live, you know, near them or around them. Um, yeah, the owl would also, could potentially be a Jupiter omen, but it's also related to K2, if you ask me, like, particularly, but I wasn't really going to touch on K2 or Rahu omens that much. Maybe I should, maybe I should do a one on that, but uh, the owl can relate to Jupiter or K2. And like seeing in the night, you know, seeing through the the deception of a worldly illusion. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, now, when it comes to Venus, obviously the cow and the bull would be, you know, these classic Venus omens. The peacock, like I was saying, is much more of a, of a Venus omen really, really bright and colorful creatures that are just pleasant to be around and are just like not violent are definitely going to be uh, a Venus related thing. Um, 
We have this bird here in America called the painted bunting. That's just like this tremendously multicolored bird that just like, it's like, it's like God took drugs and just decided to go crazy on an animal. If you want Google, it, it's ridiculous. It makes no sense. There's no evolutionary reason for why it is that way. Um, but it's beautiful and it's rare. And if you, and I've only seen that a few times and it's been in really Venusian times in my life when I was like, like one time recently I was coming back from an amazing trip with my girlfriend and time and then I just pulled into the driveway and one just flew by and it was just like what like that is so strange you know um and then of course with uh with Venus there is um flowers you know flowers are such a strong Venus omen that if you were contemplating something and you're driving down the interstate and you take a corner a turn from some gross you know, urban environment, and then you hit this patch of beautiful wildflowers, that right, and what you're thinking was about making an important decision, it's probably an important, fulfilling Venus decision. Um, that's sort of how that works. Does that make sense? Some other, another cool example of this is the pink spoonbill. Now, I, this is my experience being in a tidal marsh area. You might be able to give a different experience in your life and what is Venusian animals to you, but make sure you stick to the text and don't embellish, okay? So here's an example, the pink spoonbill. Um, I'll try to throw up an image of this for you. Pink spoonbill is gorgeous. It's a pink, bright pink biped creature with this funny little bill that's like rounder and not as sharp and masculine and menacing or threatening. And it's so beautiful. And I finally got to see the first one um, on a day when I was on a walk with my girlfriend at my house and we were just having a great time. You know what I mean? And just feeling like really just enjoying love and, and life and just... Oh, no, wait, actually, I forget. We were going to surf, and it was the last day I was going to be able to surf of the whole year, and surfing is a watery Venus recreational activity. And so we were dry. that's right, we were driving by, and we just saw it there. It was like, it was with a bunch of other ibis and other more common birds around, and I was like, what is that doing there? Oh, my God, it was the first time I've ever seen one. And it just so happened to be with my girlfriend, um, and, you know, I've been... Uh, I've been living here for like four years, you know, and, and never seen one. And they they don't usually come up this high north. They usually stay more in Florida. So that was a really cool, you know, really cool Venus omen. Um, the moon was full in Rohini Nakshatra then. Um, and when I went and surf, oh, and I just knew right then, like, I'm going to have an amazing time surfing. And I did. And it was just, it was a really great time. And that was like the end of the year for me because it's too cold to surf now. Um... Now, the river otter, I've never gotten to see a river otter, but that would be a wonderful Venus omen because they're just these playful little creatures and they slide down, you know, they, they create their own water slides to escape predators more quickly. Oh my God, it's the most adorable thing I've ever heard, right? I mean, your heart, if your heart's not melting, like, do you not have a soul? Come on, like, that's the most adorable thing ever. They're just these, Google it, watch YouTube videos about it, but they're so playful. They play in water most of the time, which is, you know, the the, the element of Venus. And when, uh, if you happen to see one in the wild, there's a good chance you'll see them slide because to escape from predators, they just go down these little water slides that they've created back down to a river where they can be safe. So, pretty adorable creatures. Um, that's definitely a Venus, um, a Venus omen if I ever see one of those. Um, if you have, please share your stories um, or about any of these things. Um, oh, and then uh, if, of course, birds of paradise, you know, but I don't think most of us are going to get to see those. But that would be, that's a prime example of Venus. Like these isolated birds on an island with no threats and predators so they've had nothing to do but just develop their crazy ways of attracting mates you know what i mean and just this whole venusian world um watch planet earth or any of the documentaries on birds of paradise i really would suggest doing that it's it's a great um fun thing if you like nature um you know also the snowy egret venus omen there if you ever heard of that um and really, again, any animal that makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside Venus uh, could be rabbit, but I think rabbit also relates to moon and Saturn. It can be a little bit grayer there. I've touched on that earlier. Um, and then, of course, ladybugs. You know, ladybugs are an omen of marriage. And I think sometimes they're called love bugs. Um, but they're, 
there was one time when I was up on the Blue Ridge Parkway with my girlfriend too, and there were just we were covered with ladybugs. Like all these ladybugs just showed up and were just covering us, and we took photos of each other with just ladybugs all over each other. So that was when we were first started dating, and it seemed like a good sign, right? And it ended up being a good, a good thing, good relationship. Even to where if it ended tomorrow, I would still say that was one of the best you know relationships I've ever had. Um, so yeah, I think that's all the. Jupiter and Venus omens I was able to share for now. I hope you guys really enjoy this video and I hope it uh, is fun and you know just share me your feedbacks because this is much more of the speculative subjective side of astrology. It's not like we're going to do peer-reviewed studies on this. This is more for just the intuitive right brain side. Thanks you guys.